Sound waves are another important kind of wave. Sound waves are longitudinal waves produced by the compression and expansion of the medium in which they propagate. Thus, their speed depends on the properties of the medium. For sound waves in a gas, such as air, the speed depends on the density and pressure, which in turn are proportional to the absolute temperature of the gas. The sound speed is equal to the square root of gamma, a constant that depends on the kind of gas times the universal constant R times the absolute temperature T divided by M, the mass of one mole of the gas or molar mass. For air, gamma is equal to 1.4 and M is equal to 29 times 10 to the minus 3 kilogram per mole. At normal conditions, the speed of sound in air can be approximated by the following relation, where T is the temperature of air in degrees Celsius. The speed of sound through air at ambient temperatures is about 330 to 340 meters per second. Sound travels faster at warmer temperatures or in lighter gases such as helium. That is why your voice squeaks if you inhale helium. The amplitude of sound waves is usually indicated by the amount of air motion or the change in air pressure associated with the wave. As the tuning fork vibrates, it compresses the air every time the bars move out. All musical sounds are made by vibrations, whether the vibrations are the strings of a bass, the reed of a saxophone, or the lips of a brass instrument player. When isolated, the vibrating part of a musical instrument usually makes a soft and not necessarily pleasant sound. A resonant chamber is usually used to amplify and enhance the sound. The resonant chamber just creates a standing sound wave inside. This is well illustrated by the case of an organ pipe. The instrument is essentially just a pipe with a standing wave inside. Some organ pipes have both ends open and others have one end closed. If both ends were closed, no sound would escape. If an end of the pipe is open, waves are free to move past the end, but the pressure at the end is fixed at atmospheric pressure. Thus the open end of an organ pipe is an air motion antinode, but a pressure node. A closed end restricts air motion, but allows pressure to build. Thus the closed end is an air motion node, and a pressure antinode. This situation is analogous to forces in waves on a string. The parts of the string that moved most twisted least, and where the string twisted most, it moved least. The pitch of wind instruments is changed either by changing the length of the instrument or by changing the number of wavelengths in the resonance chamber. Have you ever noticed how the sound of a passing car changes pitch as it passes? Small children often imitate this shift as they play with toy cars. This change in frequency is called the Doppler shift, and it occurs when the sound's source or the observer move relative to one another. When they move toward each other, the observed frequency is higher than the source frequency. When they move away from each other, the observed frequency is lower than the source frequency. Consider an observer at rest listening to the sound of an idling car. The observed frequency, F sub O, is equal to V sub E over lambda, where lambda is the wavelength of the sound and V sub E is the effective velocity of the sound perceived by the observer. In this case, V sub E is simply the sound speed V. The observed frequency, F sub O, is thus identical to the source frequency, F sub S. If the observer is moving toward the source with a velocity V sub O, the effective velocity of the sound increases. It is equal to the sum of the sound's speed V and the observer's velocity V sub O. Since the wavelength lambda of the sound produced by the car remains constant, 
the observed frequency equals the sum of the sound's speed v and the observer's velocity v sub o divided by lambda. We can use the relation between lambda and the source frequency f sub s to express the observed frequency as a function of the source frequency. This expression shows that the observed frequency increases by the ratio of the observer's velocity divided by the sound's speed. If the observer moves away from the source, the effective velocity is equal to the difference between the sound's speed and the observer's velocity. It is straightforward to show that the decrease in the observed velocity is proportional to the ratio of the observer's velocity and the sound's speed. Next, let's consider the case in which the source moves with a velocity v sub s and the observer is at rest. Since the speed of the sound depends only on the properties of the medium, the effective velocity of the sound measured by the observer is not affected by the motion of the source. However, the movement does not affect the sound's effective wavelength. This is because when the source is moving, it compresses the wavefronts in front of the source, and the wavefronts behind it become farther apart. The distance between two wavefronts, or the effective wavelength lambda sub e, is thus equal to lambda, the wavelength of the sound at rest, plus or minus the distance traveled by the source during one period, v sub s, divided by the source's frequency, f sub s. The minus sign is used for the effective wavelength in front of the source, and the plus sign for the effective wavelength behind the source. By expressing the wavelength lambda as a function of the source frequency, f sub s, and the sound speed v, we can rewrite the effective wavelength lambda sub e. We then substitute that expression into the definition of the observed frequency to obtain the relation between the observed frequency and the frequency of a moving source. Thus, the formula for the Doppler effect depends on whether or not the source is approaching or moving away from the observer. The observed frequency increases when the source approaches the observer and decreases when the source moves away from the observer. We can combine the preceding equations to get a single equation for the observed frequency when both the observer and the source are moving. As before, f sub s is the frequency of the source at rest, v the sound's speed, v sub o the velocity of the observer, and v sub s the velocity of the source. The lower part of the two signs is used for the case in which the observer and the source are moving away from each other, and the lower part is used when they are moving toward each other. When both the observer and the source are moving much slower than the speed of sound, moving either the source or the observer has about the same effect on the frequency, and thus we can further simplify the equation. Here, v sub r is the speed at which the observer and the source are moving towards or away from each other. The sign for v sub r is positive when the two are moving toward each other and negative when they are moving away from each other. If the source nears or exceeds the speed of sound, the effect of the Doppler shift is extreme. As the source approaches the speed of sound, the waves are increasingly compressed by the plane until, at length, all the waves lie together. If the source continues to increase in speed, new sound waves will be positioned in front of earlier ones, and a cone-shaped shock wave will form. This is the source of the sonic boom heard when a supersonic plane flies over.